It's time to get the rods out. Man flew. I did also see some fish in the weed just off of this spot. Oh, it's come off. Three trips later, we are in a swim. Uh, forgot my punges for the barra and my bucket of particle went over in the boot, threw the liquid everywhere, because I leave it soaked in the water. Luckily, I've got a boot liner. It's been a long time coming, but we're finally off the mark. Nice little 18 and a half pound stocky just to start us off. Got a decision to make. Do I jack it and call it a day or do I stay? Spawning is inevitable. I think it's coming possibly end of next week. So might not be able to get back in a fortnight's time. Had an aborted take on the left hand rod this morning as well. Rod tip slam round, bobbing right up to the top. Just before the clutch started to tick, it dropped off. Got down there, thought, I've got six hours. Do I leave it, do I not? Reeled it in, no lead, all point bird. So I bought a take on a chod. Last knock-ins. Come on the rod. So I find it kind of fitting, it's June the 16th, the river seasons are kicking off, lakes are reopening from spawning, and we're back down at Dell. A hunt for a 50 continues, welcome to part two, it's the summer part. Before we start, I need to say a massive thanks to everyone that tuned into part one. All your comments, likes and shares really did help the video. All your inboxes with your messages and support really does put a smile on my face, guys. Unfortunately, part one didn't. Now I watched it back start to finish and I pretty much spent the entire time picking holes in my angling. I mean, it's not every day you get to watch your entire springs fishing in that great a detail and see where you went wrong, basically. Sometimes I should have moved, sometimes I shouldn't have baited how I baited, sometimes I was in completely the wrong swim. But there's the breaks and let's just make part two a little bit better. So we're currently down at Dell. There's one angler on the road bank and I'm sat in the point. There's two reasons for me choosing the point. One, I've got a platter in front of me. It's very, very warm. We know they get up there in the sun. And yeah, there's some lovely spots on there. Number two, look at me, I'm sat in shade. Now it's 28 odd degrees, it's roasting hot. We have got a bit of an easterly blowing and I'm comfortable. Now, the last thing I wanna be doing is sweating my tits off, getting burnt, uncomfortable, sweating in a swim with no shade or cover, no breeze. And yeah, I'm just not gonna fish effectively. So that was part of the reason I came around here as well. Got a good view of the lake, seen a couple already. Um, and the rods are dispatched. Literally, a couple of scoops of bait on each rod, two chods, one on a Ronnie. So we're just gonna see today out and reassess tonight. I have brought some mixer with me as well. Now, the people tell me that they don't fish on mixer down here, they don't do surface fishing, too many ducks, but the fish don't like it. But just every now and then on lakes that don't get fished on the surface, you can have a result. So I've got them with me, we'll see how it goes. But. Right now I'm just chilling, I'm going to give it till the evening, redo the rods, and yeah, we'll go from there. So, let's kick this one off with a bang, shall we?
Well, good morning. Welcome to Saturday. It's coming up to quarter past six and nothing's happened as of yet. Did have some savage liners last night and this morning, but yeah, nothing. Have, however, seen four or five shows next door in the island swim. So I think the plan of action, see how bite time in here. Have a slow pack up and about eight o'clock I'm gonna shuffle over and fish the rest of today and tonight in next door. They are using this as a pass through. The liners are pretty consistent. You'll get one on the left and then one on the right. But all my rods are in three foot of water on a plow and you can't really fish in that gully. It's quite weedy, so. Yeah, a bit of um, anti-climax. Did see the one yesterday, had a rod on it, but nothing's happened, so. That's gonna be the plan of attack. So I'd get the kettle on, have a coffee, slowly start to pack this up. I haven't really got much gear out to be fair. And then a little shuffle over and we'll see the rest of this one out in the island swim. in truly England fashion. It's another slow start, three o'clock Saturday afternoon and we are yet to bag a fish. As soon as we moved from the point to the island and I dispatched the rods, them shows slowed right up. To another three, I think, in my water, definitely two, possibly three, and one a little bit further in white bags. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet. As long as we don't get picked up by a coot or taken out by a swan, I'm happy to leave all three rods. They're all fishing, all touch down lovely, got bait around them. Pop-ups are good for a minimum of 48 hours, so I'm happy to leave them going into tonight. I've just got an inkling that left hander might do us a bite at the one that's tucked around the back of the island between the weed beds. There's just something about that rod, I like the look of it. I've been up and down checking all the margin, all the gravel strips and runs, but nothing really looks to be turned over or disturbed, so don't really think anything's been in there. I might trickle a little bit in there before we leave, but there's no telling that we'll get back in here next weekend. So, got two more anglers on. Someone's in ramps, someone's in white bags as well. So the extra lines and disturbance may stir them up a little bit. But yep, just gonna chill, see the afternoon in, see where they show tonight, and then we'll reassess in the morning. Don't have to be off at first light. I've got a couple of hours, so there may be another move on the cards, but, yeah, I'm hoping they, they show here and everything's in ready for them in that early morning because they was definitely out there at four o'clock this morning. So yeah, we'll just have to see how it goes.
Well, that is it for me. Unfortunately, after the thunderstorm this morning, they started spawning in the airfield, so packing up, I'm off. Now, I've just got to get this lot back around to the car park. The size of that. Ridiculous. But anyway, back next Friday. Hopefully, they've got it all out of the way and we can open the account. Well, in terms of Fridays, today's a good one because we are back down Adele and we are fishing. It felt like an absolute age, almost forgot how to fish, but yeah, 28th of July and we are back. Big layoff, as you know, when we came down June the 16th on that Sunday, they kicked over, so I thought, you know what, give me another two weeks. Had my brother's, uh, my brother, my missus' brother's wedding, went to that, and then place had algae bloom. So again, gave it another week, uh, and that takes us up to today. So almost a month and a half but it is looking lovely. They've done a lot of weed breaking in between with a weed boat as well, and it's looking a lot better. It was top to bottom choked before we left last time, but there is some massive weed beds, don't get me wrong, and it is very weedy, but there are some spots now. So yeah, like I say, come round into Gurpins. It is a little bit busy, usual, usual swims all taken, ramps, airfield two, white bags deep, lodge, uh, you know the drill. So got here about two o'clock, drove all the way around as far as I can, and we've ended up in Gurpins. Southwesterly's thumping in and from previous I just think it will drag a few fish with it and hopefully we can get one. So really trying to keep disturbance to a minimal. I've set up right up the bank, the rods are down there. Um, got to be really quiet, you get a 40 yard limit. Oh, we're away. Oh. Well, as I was saying, I've set up right up the bank. I don't even know if you can see me. Probably not. Oh, don't come off. No, he's done me. No. Why, 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 what has happened there? Look, Paul. Not happy. <sighs> that is not how I wanted to kick it off, trust me. That rod's back out anyway. Um, as I was saying, Set up right up the bank, keep disturbance to a minimal because in here the spots are real short, you only got a 40 yard limit anyway, uh, but I'm only fishing 20 odd yards. So when I got here, drove the boat out, found some spots with a sonar, redrove it out and dropped a marker on the spots just to check them with a the lead. And yeah, right hand rod came up gravel, nice and bumpy, lovely smooth drag back, uh, middle and left, silty, again super smooth, nice drag. Left hand's got a little bit more low line, hence the chod. Rig wise, Trod on the left, middle's on a roddy, 15mm black seal pop-up, proper carp baits, corn kernel to top it. Right hand rod's on a blowback with a 15mm dumbbell, black seal matching. Usual bait mix that I use, impact particle mix, um, 18s, 15s, dumbbells, some crush boily, bit of rock salt, stimulant. And yeah, that has proper baffled me. Didn't expect to take straight away. So um, hopefully it's a sign of things to come. Hopefully we've got location right and they're following that southwesterly and we get another chance. No reason for that one to bounce really. Uh, hook points bird, lead's off, bead's still there, so just a, a typical chod hook hold, unfortunately. That's why I don't like using them, but with that low line, it's gotta be done. So we go again. I'm gonna lick my wounds now, have a cup of tea. Yeah, see this beautiful evening in. Um, and fingers crossed we get to make amends.
Mm. Let me get this clean quickly. Well, it is rather bleak today. It has started to rain. I've had to move the brolly to the side, which makes filming kind of sh um, Nothing happened last night. Literally, all the beeps I got was from weed in the line, so. Hmm. Yeah, one of them ones. Haven't seen anything, got up early this morning. Um, but with this rain, it's gonna make filming a little bit difficult with this camera, so just a GoPro for now. One of them ones, I'm afraid. So, looks like I'm gonna get tucked up in there, get the kettle on, and these need to do something. I mean, it's carpy as, but yeah. I've got a weed bed drifted over my left hand spot, which is not ideal. As you can see, it's just um, constantly drifting in at a minute. So this is what I've pulled off the lines so far. Oh, yeah, man, challenging. But the wind is still pushing in, so hopefully it should bring some fish down this end. I haven't touched the rods. Like I say, they all went out fine. I've got my waders on, so I'm picking the weed off the line so the, the rods are not getting disturbed. But yeah, so far, a rather bleak morning and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. I think I'm going to get tucked up in here before I get too wet and hopefully I'll catch up with you later when the rain stops. But you know what? He ain't the biggest one in here by a long shot. Well, what an angry little dude. <laughs> Look at him. Little swirl up the flank. Definitely one of the smallest in here, but a very welcome leaving present. Gonna get some baiting on them spots before we leave and we're back in a fortnight's time. Hopefully we can keep this going. Two takes, one landed. It's time for some of the bigger residents, I think. 
but he's a wicked little jet black dude. So angry, look at him. I don't think I'm even gonna bother with a photo, I'm just gonna slip this one back. Um, and yeah, we've got the rod back out now. It's probably about five o'clock now. This went at about quarter past four, it's still dark. Um, but yeah, we go again. Not a blank is the main thing. He's so cold. A little swirls. One of the smallest in there, but you know what? Start. Come on. Get on the snowman. What do you desire? What makes you itch? What sort of a situation would you like? Let's suppose, I do this often in vocational guidance of students. They come to me and say, well, uh, we're getting out of college and we haven't the faintest idea what we want to do. So I always ask the question, what would you like to do if money were no object? What, how would you really enjoy spending your life? Well, it's so amazing as a result of our kind of educational system, crowds of students say, well, We'd like to be painters, we'd like to be poets, we'd like to be writers, but as everybody knows, you can't earn any money that way. Or another person says, well, I'd like to live an out-of-doors life and ride horses. I say, do you want to teach in a riding school? Uh, let's go through with it. What do you want to do? And when we finally got down to something which the individual says he really wants to do, I will say to him, you do that. And uh, forget the money. Uh, because if you say that getting the money is the most important thing, you will spend your life completely wasting your time. You'll be doing things you don't like doing in order to go on living, that is to go on doing things you don't like doing, which is stupid. Better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. And after all, if you do really like what you're doing, it doesn't matter what it is, you can eventually turn it, uh, you could eventually become a master of it. The only way to become a master of something is to be really with it. And then you'll be able to get a good fee for whatever it is. So uh, don't, don't worry too much. Uh, that's, uh, everybody's, uh, somebody's interested in everything. And anything you can be interested in, you'll find others in. But it's absolutely stupid spend your time doing things you don't like in order to go on spending things you don't like and doing things you don't like and to teach your children to follow in the same track. See, what we're doing is we're bringing up children and educating them to live the same sort of lives we're living in order that they may justify themselves and find satisfaction in life by bringing up their children to bring up their children to do the same thing so it's all wretch and no vomit. It never gets there. And so, therefore, it's so important to consider this question, what do I desire? I've got a rather large moth in me, Bivy. So, it is currently the 28th, no it's not. Well, this is a little bit of a different picture, isn't it? Me sitting in a bivy. But the missus is joining me this weekend. So, I've got the Tempest 150, the Emperor, bit of luxury. I mean, look at all this room, like, not used to that. <laughs> so it's currently the 25th of August. So it's been quite a while since the last segment. I think the last time you see me was the 28th of July. Obviously we was in Gherpins, had a fish, lost one, put a load of bait in. To so have a little catch up, following week I went away to the lodge up in Lincoln, caught a load of fish, lovely weekend with the dogs and the missus and my mum and dad. Yeah, real, real nice, chilled weekend. 
fun fishing, easy fishing, um, yeah, really enjoyable. In that week I was away, someone came down, jumped in gherpins, had a couple of fish. Now, don't get me wrong, could be complete coincidence, but I did put a story up of the net in the tree, wet. And I don't know whether anyone seen me baiting. I know there was one person on here when I baited. Like I say, it could be complete coincidence or not. But anyway, they was in there while I was away, caught two fish. Um, come back on the 11th of August for my usual trip. It was absolutely ramo. Emery, I would tell you, I was out Thursday. <laughs> Thursday night I'm out on call, I get in at like 4 o'clock Friday morning and Emery calls me at about 7 o'clock, what are you doing, what time do you get down after work? So, look I'm off today, just getting a cut of ads kit in, he's like you need to come down, so like, right okay, loads up, comes down and it's Ramo, so I think Gherpins did the wood carving, small twins come out the airfield or the ramps, um, there's anglers in the ramps, in gherpins, in airfield too. So I'm like, oh, it's two weeks on a trot. Yeah, real despondent. Um, <laughs> Emery goes shopping and comes back with some barbecue food to try and cheer me up. Uh, and I jumped in white bags, because I thought, you know what, it's as close as I can get, I can fish long on the back of the fish. While setting up, someone comes around, jumps in free. Now, I always thought it was the unwritten rule sort of etiquette between anglers down here that if someone's in the airfield, someone's in Gherpin, you don't go in free. And so I did that as well, that's how busy it got. So yeah, Friday night, watching them showing Gherpin, bang, bang, bang. Lovely barbecue with Emery, but come Saturday, I'm still watching them showing Gherpins. I'm super despondent. I've had to spend an hour and a half pulling weed just to get my rods out. I'm, I'm just not feeling it, so packs up, goes home. So I did one night. Yeah, goes away. Another weekend off, that takes you up to today. So again, I've got Friday off and I don't think it ever matters when you're coming to the lake, whether you've got a Friday off and you're coming on a Thursday, whether you've got a Thursday off and you're coming on a Wednesday. You could be coming on a Sunday afternoon to do the, the Monday, Tuesday. There's always that rush, isn't there? There's always that adrenaline that, I've got to get to the lake, I've got to get to the lake. That, that stomach churning feeling. Um, Everyone's driving slow. You hit every single red light. Like work takes forever. It just never changes. It's been like that for the last 15 years. Just every time. Doesn't matter when I'm coming. So I mean, I'm coming ahead of the rush. I'm coming on a Thursday afternoon, and I'm still bumper to bumper. Like get me to that lake. But anyway, gets here and pulls in a car park, and I see Geezer's van, don't I? And I'm like, I know where you're going to be. So. Lo and behold, I'm driving up track, Scott's walking down, and he's in Gherpins, he's had one, he's been here since Monday, and he says he's off tomorrow. Obviously that was Thursday, so he's off today. I'm like, oh, kind of had it in my head, got these westerlies coming in again, want to get back in Gherpins. So, buckets Gherpins with the intention that he's going to go at midday and we can move in there. Comes round, ramps is free. So the ramps is really, it's got a lot of weed that's drifted in and it's cut off a lot of your water. You can't really fish a lot of it. There's like one little tiny channel out. So I jumped in the ramps. I spend an hour and a half throwing the rake, um, trying to clear some of this weed so I can get some lines out. Whilst I'm out there, I've walked as far as I can to the top of my waders and I'm, I'm on gravel, about five foot. Um, big bank of weed in front of me and there's this gravel so I'm like right I'm gonna walk a rod out here tonight so walked out with a jug a little bit of grub in there drops a rig and for the bait over it that's one rod um, the line that I managed to clear when I drove out with a boat had a look was all solid nowhere near the spot so I flicked one behind the island and for the boilers over it with a pouch um, and that's it that was me fishing. Goes round, has a beer with Scott. He has another fish. So I'm like, right, I'm coming in here tomorrow. Comes back round, it's probably about seven o'clock now, Thursday evening. Thought, oh, I've got to rod up at the bivvy. I might as well pub chuck it. So literally, chucks out to the channel that I've cleared. I think two or three casts, I get a drop. So I'm like, right, clip, little drag back. Yep, that'll do. 
chucks it again, another drop. Throws a Ronnie rig on it, 15mm Mulberry, bit of foam, chucks it out. As soon as the foam come up, I catapulted 20 boilies around it, puts it on the rest, comes in here, starts to splice up some leaders. Within five minutes of putting that rod out, fucking rattling, isn't it? So I will leave you with the footage from that whilst I make a cup of tea and then I'll touch base with you about today. Big stock here, at mid 50s. That would be nice. Twenty four and a half. I'm gonna keep this short and brief because there's a lot to go through. But I'll get them up to show you. She is an absolute wicked little fish. <laughs> How about that for a start? 24 and a half pound. We'll go for everything in a minute, but it was literally just a single on a pub chuck. And I'm gonna take that. It's getting dark, so Scott's here, he's gonna do me some photos, slip her back, and then I've got to sort out the rods, and then I'll see you after that. But I'm happy with that, what a start. I'll take that any day. So you can now understand my dilemma. I've had a 24 and a half. I'm in good water. It's currently about six o'clock and I've seen probably one fish in front of me, I've seen one in front of Scott, two in white bags and between deeps and the island swim I've seen a few as well. So at the minute it's northwesterlies, it's going over into the corner near white bags so I'm expecting to see a lot more fish over there because I do follow the wind. But come this afternoon it swings back to westerlies, southwesterlies into Gherpins and it's going to be until Monday. So I've got a decision to make, do I stay in the ramps? I mean right now I feel like I'm not fishing, I've just pub chucked, cut the rods, catapults and boilie over the top. So I either stay and invest the time into finding some spots to get some rods out properly over bait or I wait till he goes at midday and I move in Gherpins and I've got three spots pinned on the Echo, I know the spots, yeah. Mating that was in the ramps Monday or Thursday, I think he had three or four. Scott's only had two. Um, yeah, I'm real stuck. <laughs> I got the missus coming down this afternoon, so I need to be settled by midday. If I'd have had another take through the art through the night or this morning, I mean, bite time's probably up until about 10 o'clock, but then Scott had a take at about two. There was me having a take at like eight o'clock at night, so. Yeah, I don't really know. The fishing is probably more comfortable in Gherpins because the weed's clear in front of you. You've got massive banks either side, but your actual water is clear. 
whereas in here, I've got weed in a big arc in front of me. All the water to my left is taken by a weed, so I can't get out to them spots. The long spots in front of me, big bank of weed. I've kind of got this tiny little channel out to my left. So yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know what to say, don't know what to do. But yeah, that's where we're at. We're here anyway, and we've had one, so it's all good. It's just, I need to make some decisions. I've been watching the water since about R4, and like I say, nothing distinctive in my water or Scots to say, I need to be there, or I'm gonna stay here. So yeah, just ride the morning out, and I've got a few hours to make my mind up. It ain't a bad decision, is it, between the two flyers? But yeah. I will catch up with you around midday when I've made a decision. Well, that was effort. I'm glad I decided to stay put in the ramps after I moved 99% of the gear. Uh, the only thing I had left out in here was the rods. I'd actually done three trips, everything was round there behind Scott ready, and then sitting around here, Emery calls me, um, having a little to and fro about what's going on, see a couple of fish show. So I'm like, mate, what the hell? <laughs> so, decided to stay. So I've literally reset the bivy up. To be fair, there's a bee's nest down there, so I'm happy I've moved it back a little bit because the dog's coming down and it will be chasing them all night. Um, so yeah, moved the bivy back, set it up, went and got all the gear. So plan of action, I'm gonna get the marker float out. I'm gonna have a feel around this zone that this fish has showed. I don't think I'm gonna bother with a boat. I'm just gonna have a couple of casts with a marker, see if I can get a couple of drops, and then it's gonna be a case of getting a couple of rods over there on that spot and I'm gonna spawn some bait over the top. Uh, yeah, it's all action, so quick drink and then get the marker and the spawn out um, and it's time to have a little feel around. Go back to my roots, I think, with the old casting, feeling for the drop, little drag back, lovely, I'll present on that. Um, Cause I think I'm just being so picky with this boat and it's just driving me insane. So, got a plan, all set up again. So yeah. Let's do it this time. <laughs>
So a lot's happened since I last touched down with you. Obviously decided to stay in the ramps. I had a good investigation with the marker float where we see them two fish and managed to find a really big spot. So stuck all three out on it. Bit of grub over the top, part called boily, pellet, the usual. And that was me last night dangling. Missy's turned up with a dog, so that was a big faff, getting everything back in the bivvy, all the stuff. Emery turned up, had a little social on an overnight hour, so we had a beer, cut the pizzas. Yeah, really good night, but fishing wise, not great. So, having only seen a couple this morning, um, I reeled one of the rods in from the spot, stuck it behind the island, because last night one did roll over there, but again, nothing. And then about one o'clock today, we had this really heavy rainfall roll in, um, and it switched them on. There was probably 10, 15 shows, really two concentrated areas over my spot, exactly on my spot, and literally to the left. Um, then it went mill plum flat, could see him fizzing on the spot. Then the wind picked up, it was slicking, so I was there having a munch, but yeah, it just didn't happen. So decided I've got to get a rod out on that other zone where they were shoving. Um, so I've had the raking again, cleared a bit more of the weed to my left. Um, I probably pulled more weed this weekend than I ever have down here all year. But anyway, I've got a channel out now, and lo and behold, same sort of wraps. Pff, cracks down, little drag back, that's enough for me. Um, so I've got to put a runny rig out there, Gonna spawn some boiling pellet only, nothing else um, on that one. Probably only five, six bombs, just enough for a bite. And then I'm gonna keep the other two going out. I'll redo them later on tonight, and then obviously top up the spot with another five bombs, um, and we'll roll into the morning like that. But I am really confident tonight. They're definitely down here. They were having a munch. Um, the spot was slicking. They was fizzing. I was watching them through the binoculars, and yeah, they was there. But it just didn't go. So yeah, really confident. So that's it. Roll on it. Roll with it. So I'm going to get this done. The missus has popped down the stable to deal with the horse, uh, so she took the dog with her. I'm going to get this done, get sorted. Got more rain coming in as well, so if it's anything like it was a minute ago, yeah, all sweet. So yeah, that's how we're doing it. So I'll probably leave the filming. I'll have a little catch up with you tomorrow, but I'll do bits and bobs. But unless we have a fish, keep it to a minimum. So yeah, I will see you, hopefully, in a few hours. Definitely a better one. Oh. It's three o'clock in the morning. Oh. And a left hand rod. It's gone into meltdown. Oh. Lily is only from. Oh, would you look at that? 24 and a half pound again, but it's three o'clock in the morning and that work on that left hand spot has paid off. This is the one that's just rattled off on the left hand up. So I'll wake the missus up now, get some photos quickly. We're gonna get this one back, but what an absolute banger that one is. I'll show you the other side quickly. I mean, I don't know if it's doing it justice on the video, I really don't. It's always tricky in the night, but it's 
three o'clock in the morning, so I'm not leaving her in the net for four hours. What an absolute cheese that one is. That'll do, that'll do. Number two. So yeah, quick couple of photos, get this one back, and then I've got to get a rod out. But yeah, I'll take that. Nice little wake up call. And it makes the effort definitely worth it. I'll have a coffee in the morning, didn't you? So guys, you join me on what will be the last segment to the summer park. Got down Friday after work and the lake was extremely busy. Somehow, with a westerly blowing, I've managed to get into gherpins. Now, we all know what the lake does on, on a wind. Uh, we know the fish follow the wind. Don't get me wrong, it's an old one. It's been in all week. There is a slight change, goes to southwesterly Sunday night. So that's into the ramps and me a bit more than it is now. So yeah, just tried to go off previous. The lake is very busy. So I just thought maybe the fish might follow it, get into a corner away from all the pressure. So that's what we did. Jumped in here yesterday. I dispatched three fluoro Ronnie rigs onto the spots. Little bit of a black seal pellet, black seal boily, and a tiny little bit of particle. Particle wise, I've made the move to carbon baits. Really like the look of the dark side mix. Delivery was spot on, and obviously the quality of particle is it's just so good. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at now. Yeah, that's it really. Dispatched the rods last night, got the barbecue on, had something to eat. Kept my eyes open, didn't really see much, and I didn't see anything this morning when I got up either. I'm gonna leave the rods in till midday. Um, I've actually got Craig coming down to have a walk round as well. He's um, talking about joining next year. So I'm gonna walk him around about 11 o'clock, sit this one out till Sunday, and then that's it, video drops. Well, if you're watching this now, then obviously you know the video's dropped. Thank you for watching till the end. Hopefully it's a bit more enjoyable than the spring part. I know it was for me fishing it. I tried to keep it a little bit more shorter as well. And that will be it for summer. We are now coming into my favorite season, which is autumn. Definitely, definitely the most productive, I think, for carp fishing. Really, really excited for the next couple of months. The autumn part will be dropping, um, I think it's towards the end of December we're gonna drop it, so yeah, obviously stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed, hit subscribe, turn the bell on, you'll get all the notifications when the videos are dropping. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'm sounding like I'm rounding this up now. We've still got all day tonight and tomorrow morning, so fingers crossed. Uh, we might be able to put one more on the summer part. I am slightly confident the wind's pushing in, so there's no reason they shouldn't get down here and we can't nick one. It's just going to be a case of if they're up for a munch with the amount of pressure that's on the lake today. Nice day to be out on the bank, got sun all day, wind's not swinging, so it's coming down this way all day long. Hopefully we've guessed it right. Mm. <sighs> Do love a coffee.
Well, another really uneventful day. I left the rods out until about half past three because that was when bite time was and yeah, absolutely nothing. Seen nothing. No one's had anything around the pond and it is pretty full now. Um, I believe Airfield 2 lost one in the wee this morning, early doors, but other than that, nothing. So, Barbie's on. I'm gonna get some grub on the go. Like I say, redid the rods about half three. Uh, the only change I've done is come off the fluoro and I've gone onto a stiff coated hook link. Um, something I'm testing, but I ain't gonna get into any of that now. When the time's right, you'll know about it. Uh, but there's your little teaser. So yeah, if I don't see you in the morning, then I hope you enjoy the summer part and I will look forward to seeing you in the autumn. Um, but there could just be one more surprise. Who knows? Got the night and early doors tomorrow. They might just follow that wind a little bit. Now it's swung, it's a, it's a new wind, albeit only a little change, it is a new wind. So, yep, rigs are on a dance floor, Mulberry's on all three, fresh bait, fresh rigs, no disturbance, literally straight in, straight back out of the boat. So, we can only hope. But right now, a couple of beers, some barbecue food, and just keep my eyes on the water. Because like I say, I'm yet to see anything didn't show this morning, haven't shown all day. So, yeah, real disappointing. This weather is cock on and I really thought something might have happened. But anyway, enough waffling. I will see you in the morning if I have something. If not, I'll catch you in the autumn.